Good morning and welcome. Today we celebrate the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant this morning is Father Kevin. Our Mass is being offered for the intention of Lucy Kohler. Please stand as we begin our Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good morning, everyone. My brothers and sisters, we gather in the presence of our loving God to call to mind our sins, but to celebrate his healing strength and loving mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom, Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal us of the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promise to be with us in our need. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. 
Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up and going to Eli, he said, here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, go to sleep, and if you are called, reply. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what he said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. So what type of person are you when you walk in the store of a rather friendly or maybe aggressive salesperson who the minute you walk in the door, they say, what can I help you with? What are you looking for? And they start following you. Are you the type of person who says, well, this is what I'm shopping for. This is kind of what I need. And they take you on your way. Or are you the type of person that says, no, I'm just looking. No, I'm, I'm fine. And they're, they keep stalking you, if you will, a little bit until finally you realize you have no idea what you're looking for. You have no idea what you're searching for and you can't find it. And so you have to ask for help. So which of those two people are you? Because we know as we walk into stores, especially now, just after Christmas, but especially now when things have been quiet, 
salespeople are a little more aggressive. They're a little more on top of you. Well, I have to admit, I'm the first person. I think they see me coming in the window and says, here he comes. And I'm the type of person that says, I'm shopping for this. This is what I need. And sometimes I'll even add on, I don't have a lot of time to do it, especially at Christmas. I walk into a store, and they, some of the stores I go to year after year, they say, same people? Same people you're shopping for? Yes. They take me to exactly what I need, and it's done quickly. But let's focus on the times in our lives that we've been like those where we walk in and someone wants to help us. Someone wants to help us find something. And we say, no, we're fine. We can handle this. I'm just looking. I'm just searching. And, you know, we walk up and down the aisles. We walk back and forth. And we do this in life. We just start work, walking in circles aimlessly. And before long, we realize we've wasted a lot of time. We've been searching, but we don't even know where to begin to look. We're searching, but we don't know what we're looking for. We're searching, and we can't find any simple way or direction just to lead us on a path that, or someone says, no, it's over there, and we at least go in that direction. Taking the lead from someone takes a lot of humility. Taking the lead from someone and following them and allowing them to show us something that we're looking for or something that we need, not just in a store, but in the story of our lives, takes a lot of humility. They asked Jesus, where are you staying? Where are you going? They were looking for something. Jesus recognized it immediately. What are you looking for? Why are you following me? Well, where are you staying? And Jesus says, come and see. Those simple words, come and see, those inviting words, those words that obviously change their lives because all of us are here this morning. Those simple words, come and see, that allow their horizons to be broadened, their eyes to be opened, their hearts to be changed. Simple words, but they were able to follow someone who would give them guidance, someone who would give them direction, someone who would lead them somewhere. Imagine how in our lives we followed people back and forth, back and forth, and we're still lost. Imagine how we've set our minds and hearts on certain things, and we still can't find what we're looking for. They followed Jesus. And he asks each one of us, just like we walk into a store helpless at times, what are you looking for? I'm here to help you. But it takes, as I said, humility. Because you see, in case no one's told you or told me, I think we have to say it out loud, we really do think we have it all figured out on our own. I know the best answer. I know the best way. I know the best solution. Well, where has it led us? Where has it led us on our spiritual journey closer to God? Where has it led us in our search for peace? Where has it led us if we're not following the Lord? who invites us to come and see. See, he takes us not just to the place where he's staying, he takes us to his heart. He takes us to peace. He takes us to a sense of tranquility. He takes us to a sense of direction. And we all know the great serenity that we have, the great peace that we have when we know we're on a journey following the Lord because it gives us that sense of peace. It gives that, us the sense that we're doing something and we're getting something out of it. We're getting a sense that we're changing our lives. We're getting a sense that we're helping other people. We're getting a sense that we're growing closer to our own heart and to the hearts of others. But it means humility. It means our willingness to say, I am going to follow you. I'm going to follow you wherever you go. Because the Lord Jesus Christ is the one, the only one, who knows the way, because he is the way. He's the only one that can lead us to the light, because he is the light. He's the only way that we can find the truth, because he himself is the truth. Where are you going, Lord? Come and see. Come closer. Come, come to me. And as we know, in another place in the gospel, he says, I will give you peace. It is the peace that we all long for. 
It's the peace our world, our nation hungers for. And yet, in our own way, we walk into a store. I'll find it. I'm, I'm fine on my own. Or better yet, I'm just looking. We just want to put our, our toe in the water. We don't want to follow him completely. And we know we just walk in circles. We don't find what we want. We're aimless. And being aimless usually winds us up lost and at a dead end. So today we listen to Jesus saying, come, come follow me. Come, I will show you where I'm staying. Come, I will show you peace. And they followed him. And like I said, we're all here this morning because they became closer to Christ. And just as it says, they went and gathered their brothers. The Lord invites us to follow him, but he also invites us to imitate him. Each day of our lives, we hear that gentle voice of the Lord saying, be kind, be generous, be loving, be forgiving, be humble. And all those things that that little voice in our minds and our hearts call us to is the voice of Christ. It's the voice to follow him. It's the voice to go and see where he is so that we can find our true peace, our true inner peace, our closeness to him. So often we say, okay, I hear you but not right now. Okay, I know what you're saying, but I have to do this first. Okay, I know it's the right thing, but you don't know how mean they are, how they don't understand the whole picture. It's the voice of the Lord he does know. It's the voice of the Lord that speaks to us, and he knows far more, far more than any of us will ever know. Humility calls us to embrace his voice, to listen to it, and to follow him, not to walk into his life and say, oh, no, I'll find it. No, I'm just looking. No, I don't need any help. But allow the Lord to be the one to say, here is what you need. Here is exactly what you need to give to that person. Here is exactly what will settle your heart. Here is exactly what will give you peace. And may our response not be, yeah, I know, Lord, that's, that's nice, but it's not in my price range. It's not in my, no, I don't think that's the right thing. No, I, I don't have enough time right now. But rather, with peace in our own hearts, may we echo those words. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. We are his servants. May we listen with hearts willing to follow. Let us renew our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Aware of Jesus' gentle invitation to follow him, we come now to his heart with our prayers.
that those who lead our church may receive God's guidance and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those suffering oppression throughout the world may experience the peace of Christ in their lands and in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who struggle with chronic physical ailments, especially Sue Basil, may grow strong under the gentle and nurturing hand of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus' love may conform us evermore to his own heart as we strive to follow him more closely. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the souls of the faithful departed, especially Fernando Fuseli, husband of Maria Jean Vuocola, and for Lucy Kohler, for whom this Mass is offered, may eternal, may they find eternal peace in God's presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of love and mercy, you have given us your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the light of the world. We ask that you hear these spoken prayers and those in the silence of our hearts through Christ our Lord. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that you sent in your mercy the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so with all the angels and saints, we give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. My friends, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Have a wonderful day, everyone.
table.